Not too long ago, building a real-time chat application used to be hard. But nowadays, we have tools like Firebase and Vue that make this process super easy. Firebase is Google's platform for helping you quickly deploy scalable apps with features like user authentication, hosting, analytics, and much more. Today, we'll be combining the power of Firebase and Vue 3 to build a real-time chat application. Most importantly, we'll be looking at using Firebase with the Vue 3 composition hooks, setting up Firebase authentication with Google, and reading and writing to a Firebase store in real time. Many of these concepts can also be applied to other JavaScript frameworks. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of how you can use Firebase and Vue to build amazing applications. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. You can find a link to the full source code and live demo in the description below. Now, let's get started by using the Vue CLI to create our Vue application. This may look different depending on the version you have installed, but make sure you select Vue 3 as we'll be using the Composition API. Once the Vue project is set up, we'll also need to install Firebase to get access to Firestore and authentication. Let's create a Firebase JS file where we'll set up and initialize our Firebase application. We'll now need to create our Firebase project to get the configuration details. Let's head over to Firebase and create a new application. The process is straightforward and should only take a few seconds. We'll also need to enable a few options before we can head back. First, let's enable Google Authentication by going to Authentication, clicking on Sign In Methods, and then enabling the Google option. We'll also need to enable Firestore and configure the security results for test mode. You should change these if you plan on using the application in production. Lastly, let's create our web application so we can grab the web configuration details we'll need in our view application. Once again, fill out the information and copy the Firebase configuration details. We'll paste this configuration into our Firebase JS file where we'll initialize our Firebase application. This file will actually contain all we need for interacting with Firebase. So let's also create some composition functions we can import in our view components. The first function we'll create is for handling authentication. This will listen to auth state changes and assign the value to a user reactive variable. We'll also need to make sure we unsubscribe from the event when the component is unmounted. We can add a computed property here to check if a user is logged in or not, since Firebase will return null if a user is not authenticated. This will be useful when we start creating components. Let's also create a side-in function that we can call to log a user in. This will create the pop-up you see when you click the sign-in button. Since we enabled Google Authentication, we'll use the Google Authentication provider and pass that into the sign-in function. We'll also create a simple sign-out function as well, which is pretty trivial to implement. Next, let's create some hooks for our Cloud Firestore. The Firestore will have a collection called Messages, which will contain all the messages a user enters. Since there could be millions of messages, we want to make sure we only grab the most recent 100 messages. We'll listen to this query inside our use chat hook. We'll assign the results to an array which contains all of our messages. To clean this up, we'll add an un-unmounted lifecycle hook to close the snapshot listener. We'll return this array along with a function that can add a message to the messages collection. We'll want to make sure a user is logged in before we create a new message, and we can grab the current user and their auth status by calling our previous function useAuth. If the user is logged in, we'll grab their display, photo, and ID, and insert a new message into the Firebase storage. I've installed an NPM package called Bad Words. You can install it as well if you'd like, but before we insert our message into the database, we can apply the filter to remove any bad words. Now, we can import any of these functions into our view components for calling and interacting with Firebase. Let's start off by creating our navbar component, since it will allow users to sign in and out. We'll need our useAuth hook to get information about the user and allow them to sign in and out. If a user is signed in, we'll want to display their avatar and a sign out button. And if they're not signed in, we'll want to show a sign in button. 
And now we have user authentication with Google. Thanks to Firebase for making this process super simple. Next, let's create our chat window. This will contain all messages and show an input box if the user is signed in. We can grab the most recent message from our use chat hook function and iterate over all of them. The message component will accept a photo URL, a name, a Boolean for determining if the person is sending or receiving, and the text itself. The sender property will determine if the user is sending or receiving the message so we know which color and side to display it on. We can set this property by simply checking if the message was created by the user who is currently logged in. We can grab the user object with our use auth hook we defined earlier. The message component will display the text and avatar and show the message with a different color if the user is sending or receiving the message. I'm using Tailwind for all of the CSS styling, which you can find in the full source code in the main.css file. All I'm doing is depending if the user is sending or receiving, I will toggle CSS classes on or off. We're also going to add an empty div below the messages. We'll use this div to scroll into view when any new messages are added. To do this, we'll create a null ref called bottom and add a ref to the component with the same name. Now, when the component gets mounted, the bottom ref will be assigned to this HTML element. We can now add a watcher to the messages and use our bottom ref to scroll it into view every time the array changes. We'll need to make sure we add a deep option here so that it looks at all nested values. We'll need to wrap the scroll into view function inside a next tick function. This is because the watch function will be called at the same time that we are trying to render the messages in the template. We need to make sure that all the elements have been rendered before we scroll down to the bottom. For the last part of this chat app, we'll create the form a user can type to send a message. Since we only want to display this form if the user is logged in, we can once again use auth hook to check if the user is logged in or not. When a user clicks submit on the form, we'll call our send message function and clear the text input area. That's it. We have a full real-time chat application. Thanks to Firebase and Vue, you can see how simple it is to create such a complex application that could have taken months of work a few years ago. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other tutorials. Hope to see you in the next one.